Hey everyone, and welcome to the next edition of the Snapchat. I'm joined today by none other than Cozy Snap. Cozy, we've got a lot to talk about today. This is one of the absolute massive episodes that we do. We're going to be going back through October, doing our final rankings, holding ourselves accountable. I love this because uh, it's kind of like that nice recap. It's the cherry on top of what was a pretty fun season with a lot of really interesting cards. Cozy, how was your season in October? Uh, I thought it was good, man. I thought there was a lot of... Um, yeah, honestly, it's exactly how I thought the season was going to play out. Uh, where we said there's cards that are limited and they're going to help out archetypes. I think, uh, not to get ahead of ourselves, but I would say uh, Agent Venom became just an absolute just terror within Snap and what he brought to the game and just goes to show you big abilities, big opportunity matters a lot. Uh, I thought it was a good season. It was fun. Uh, I would say I'm looking forward to this next season more than I was October, uh, but I'm excited to, to relive some of these rankings. Yeah, like October had like the scary Halloween feel too, which I appreciate, right? Um, especially with obviously like the last dance coming out as well. Um, it was it was a good flavorful season. I am looking forward to the next one. But what I will say is that uh, Agent Venom. Okay, let's start with Agent Venom, the season pass card. Talk about plot armor, right? They instead of nerfing Agent Venom, they buffed <laughs> Shadow King, right? And uh, that's a whole other conversation for another day. We'll let you guys kind of duke it out in the comments there. But <laughs> it's hard to imagine that you and I came in very positive at four stars together. We both said four stars and somehow it feels like we missed solo. <laughs> you know what I mean? Isn't that so crazy? Uh, dude, my exact thoughts. We both gave it four. Hey, listen, four out of five, obviously only one better star we could have gave it, but how we talked about it. And to be fair, no one did this where it was like, this is going to be the best card. Like this is a clear cut best card. I don't think either of us gave him the number. Did we give him number one on the scene? I don't want to spoil it, but did we give him number one? Um, uh, No, we did I, not. I have to, I, I have to feel like clearly like we gave him a four, but we didn't give him like the, the love that he deserves. And that's probably because, uh, I mean, I'm a much more of a balanced player now or, you know, some of the, the, the decks that he works well with. Yeah, man, Agent Venom's good. Good God, he's good. He wasn't being played that much in balance either. It's like the yeah. scope that he's being used in is crazy like it's just it's stupid because like you do you do like a deck recap video and it's like he's in seven of the decks like it's it's so it, the free to play players i feel for because you're like man like what do you even do like it's been that impactful to the point like it's it wasn't broken the way like loki was like og loki uh even og elsa no it wasn't like that but it is like this is as powerful as you can get without people actively uninstalling and like flexible. this is as powerful as you can get without like having to like we need to nerf this like next ota you know what i mean yeah and man i just every every guy i played every opponent i played on turn two played turn this two, card baby every and time it's like every time and i'm just searching looking i'm like I, there was a time i had to double check that i put him in the deck he was there but he wasn't that's like me every single time I'm trying to test a card, right? It's like it's Twitch stream day two. I'm like, where everyone's all hyped up. We play for 45 minutes, never draw it once. It's <laughs> like, it's like everyone's coming in, like, how's Angel Venom? I'm like, I don't know. I don't even know what it looks like. <laughs> Haven't seen his animation yet. And then my opponent is like, Agent Venom two. Yeah, right. And then it's like a turn six, it's like four powered uh friggin' Mysterios all over the place. I'm in tears. It happens it's, to me it's, it's all the sight. time. I'll do like on like, yeah, my new card video day or whatever. I'll I'll play like I'll show like Four battles where I played him and like two where the opponent did. And they're like, why didn't you show more battles? I'm like, I played six hours. This is what I had. This is what I got. This is all <laughs> yeah. I could do. Uh, but yeah, Agent Venom, definitely best card of the month. I can say that. Oh, no question. Confidence. He's absolutely spanking everything. He's running approximately a 53% win rate, a meta popularity of 22%. That's crazy. And that feels low. Like yeah. my games are like, it's just nonstop Agent Venom. And with that being said, he's much fairer than some of the other like times where it's like, oh, look, Erisham's running 78% of the meta or whatever. He's much fairer than that. But he's still like, again, this is the upper echelon of like what balance can be before. Like, I don't know, it's going to get nerfed. And it's so easy to bring it down to two, three. It's not being played in any of the Copium Cerebro decks or anything like that. Like it's not seen there. It can be power tuned. I think the four, sending things to four is crazy. Like Iron Man, five, four, stupid, right? Uh, it's just even Cassandra Nova starting at three, four. Sage starting at three, four. 
Pretty much every single card that has a low power starting as a four is crazy. Hood, right? Anything, right? It's it's just such a stupid effect, and I cannot believe how good it is. And uh, But at the same time, it's like I was listening back to our original conversation, and there were reasons to kind of be a little, like, a little hesitant on it. But just the deck builds got so tight so fast, and this card ran away with the meta. Yeah, I mean, for me, it was the it was the cheap cards, man. The one cost. Yeah, you just said hood. I mean, rocket, silver sable. These cards just get any of the one four. It is just crazy to see how high they can build, how fast they can go. Um, yeah, I mean, I I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I was gonna say I don't know if they nerf it. I it's a two four because it sets it to four. Do they get rid of that? I feel like sometimes they hold on to things just to keep it they like the flavor of that stuff right like i totally see where you're coming from it's like they like the flavor of a two four setting things to four that's probably how the design conversation started and now they need to deviate from that they i don't think they changed the four i think they changed like the sorry set the power to four i think they changed the power for sure if they changed to a three cost i think that like i don't want to say kills the card but that's a far different card oh because yeah because of the impact that the like the fact you play it on two and you curve into these buff four costs not four cost, four power cards, right? That's a huge nerf changing the energy. Yeah, I don't think that would be fair to the people that got uh, the card and what they thought that it was going to do. No, not at all. And actually, on that note, this is an interesting question here, right? And uh, before we move on to the next card, seeing as though, like, you're going to, if you're watching this on the Monday, you still got time to buy the season pass. Is this card good enough to just be like, if you got the 10 bucks, just spend the 10 bucks get the card because it's going to be six thousand tokens right and we know how much six thousand tokens cost i mean look at just gore you know it, it, by itself it's like well damn i mean cards are going to keep coming out where it's going to love agent venom there's going to be decks with him in the future if they nerf him it's tough to say right but uh if they don't yeah i think so if you play marvel snap you know a good amount yeah if you if you've been playing free to play and you're waiting for him to come out into the uh the token shop then like i think it's probably worth picking up i just get nervous that as he exits the season pass like is that when they're willing to give him a slap you know what i mean a little backhand knock him down a little bit and then that that's that feels a little bad but uh, agent venom without question the card of the month absolutely cracked um and it's again hard to believe we missed low at four stars that's how stupid it's been and the next card that came out was uh we identified it as probably our favorite card of the month and that's scream um we came in also together holding hands cozy four stars on scream the car did get changed it started as a 2-2 it had uh it worked alongside something like the juggernaut stealing power from the unrevealed they took away that interaction and then what they did was they buffed it to a 2-3 uh, so it did get one additional power despite the fact it lost the interaction with unrevealed cards it's running a 54 percent win rate which is astronomical uh, it's only running a 4% popularity though. Like, it's like, this is the best card of the season that people aren't really treating like the best card of the season, which is kind of interesting. It spiked and then it fell. And I feel like Surtur might do that a little bit too. Like I, when they, when you have these cards that are really good, but they play one style, like we kind of see that happen from time to time. Also a little bit of an illusion here on her too. It looks like half her leg is missing, but it's just bent over there. Do you see that little uh, leg bent? Action? I see it. I yeah. See it, yeah. Uh, I still play a lot of Scream. I actually did. I have a nearly 200 boosters i just haven't upgraded her don't know why i like it uh but uh, uh i i think that she's definitely uh really good still and i love the play style of deck i think there's cards that can come out that can boost it this is one of my favorite cards the friga potentially uh and that, that's coming out scream again i think we kind of said if you want to play that deck she's awesome she does super well if you don't i don't know um and i think she will be fine more in the future uh what did we give it four stars yep. both of us came in at four that's fine. I think I, I think I feel okay with that stat. And uh, it, listen, it literally brought cards back to life, and that's always a good thing in Snap. The exact thing we said was that the card is going to be good, but its supporting cast is garbage, and that's exactly how it plays out. Now you're playing the Kingpin mobster move style deck, yeah. and if you don't draw the Scream on two or at all, then the whole deck feels like poo. It's like, hey, I got Polaris. Just you move here, I guess, bro. Like, there's a chance you don't even have Kingpin on the board. You know what I mean? They're even running Craven now as a backup to not drawing Scream. So it's like, it's all dependent on, like, that early game draw. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's almost, like, negative. Like, in a sense of if you don't draw Scream, the deck has a much harder chance to win. 
I think this was the biggest sign that when a new card comes out, it's everywhere. Because, dude, the week this was played, the popularity must have been 70%. Like, it was it was everywhere the week it came out. Uh, and then it's kind of died down since. It feels like, and I don't know about you, October felt like a long month. Scream, I thought dude, was like last month. Really I'm going to be honest. Yeah. I know. It was a long, long month. A lot happening. Just, uh, it was a busy time in games. Busy time in Snap. Busy time for Cozy and Alex. Busy time for you guys at home, I'm sure. But you know what? You know what was very consistent? My enjoyment of Scream. Because the card is good. And yep. uh, four stars, I think we we hit it. Uh, I mean, some of the decks are running like high 50% win rates. And it's crazy because it runs Arrow, it runs Stegron. All these cards that saw absolutely no play found themselves in the Scream deck. And that deck is like one card away. One more yep. synergistic card away from being absolutely bonkers. What's not absolutely bonkers is Misery. And uh, I'm actually kind of nervous here, Cozy. I, um, man, okay, I'll let you lead into this. What did you ready. give it? What, what did we Don't, why'd give you have it? To ask? Why do we have to lead with that? Why do we know. have to lead with that, Because I forgot. Cozy? I forgot. Yeah, no, you don't. You, you went know, low, no. right? Cozy, you did not forget. Yeah, I went very low. Cozy, I came in at a four stars. Uh, but in my defense, I said I was not happy about it. It was unenthusiastic. Un 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 However... I was hoping that deck design eventually would have lifted this to a potential four star. It didn't quite make it. We do have a couple decks that are running like 54% win rates, but yes, I'm coping. Okay. The card's not good. Cozy, you won this duel. You came in at 2.5. I came in at four. I was wrong. It was an unenthusiastic four star and it's an enthusiastic 2.5 for me i do think it is a cool card i think there are some fun builds you can do with it the the risk reward is exactly what i thought i think that's what i kept going on about it just wasn't worth it a 4.8 they even boosted it up a powerpoint right um yeah four stars a high rating for sure i <laughs> i don't think it's that anymore but uh yeah uh it's uh, so i gave it a two and a half or a two you gave it a two and a half I'd stick with that. Yeah. And also, this is post-buff, too, which is kind of crazy. It's running a 49% win rate. And it's running a 6% play rate, which is more than Scream. People are cooking with it. Like, there are people still playing this deck. You see, like, these Grandmaster decks running, like, uh, like uh, Black Widow, Cassandra, even the Phoenix Force to reproc the on-reveal again. Like, it's, it's a very interesting take on those lists. And it, it's performing well in that, but... Pretty much nowhere else. I really liked this with low cost cards. And then you Cersei this card on one lane and like Cersei could get this to a five. A lot of good fives. Like it, that was like the fun stuff that I was seeing it up against. Um, I went up against, uh, what's that guy's name? Yo, Woody. And uh, he had a deck that did that. And uh, it was cool. It's cool to see. It's fascinating to me when I look down the list of decks, not a single one was Destroy. Destroy did not make the cut at all. Nope. Uh, none of the, the Destroy-centric stuff worked. That's what you liked yeah. so much about it was the whole Noel thing. Yeah, yeah, that Noel would have his own identity. Yeah, I did. And you know what? I actually, in my release review video of it, I'm like, no, it doesn't work, man. It just did not feel good enough. And, uh, like, it's one of those things where, like, on, on paper, you can convince yourself of things. And then when you play the damn card, you're like, bruh. You know what I mean? Like, it becomes very clear that the ideas you had didn't work. And that's why pen and paper doesn't always compete in terms of deck design with actual, th uh, like, methodical testing, right? And Misery's a good lesson in that. Uh, so let's move on from this absolute gong show so we can move on to some better things. Cozy, Scorn. And we were pretty high on Scorn. Uh, we came, I came in at a four. You started at a four, and then you drifted to 4.5 land. You're like, you know what? I can see it in being discard, a little better yeah. than that. Because we, yeah, yeah. no, we talked about her. Where else are you playing it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we talked about her and, and well, I, I know that's what I said about her and Toxin. I think it's important. We were like, yeah, they, those were so hard to give star rankings to because we were like, let's just talk about it and where it belongs, yeah. right? Um, yeah, dude, I I, I still like Scorn. I think it Scorn, uh, I've seen people either really like her or uh, they're like, yeah, it's okay. Again, if you played discard before, get her. If you didn't, don't get her. That's how I felt about her. Still, I liked her. She was a good card. It's okay as a hot take. It's a really good card. It's running a 53% win rate at 8% of the meta. Um, and that's solid. The only thing I don't like about it is I feel like it steps on the identity of Apocalypse a little bit. And I'm often like, okay, I got Apocalypse and Scorn in my hand, and they're doing the same thing. And I felt that was kind of weird. I, I don't know if that's a fair thing, like a fair criticism. And I, I wasn't a huge fan of that. But its actual power output... 
you cannot have a one costed card that does more than this for discard like dude what else do you want like it makes meek look stupid and meek got nerfed it was a, remember it was a 1-1 one, one and it was going crazy. They had to nerf it to a 1-0. Like, actually, then they buffed it again. <laughs> Whatever. That, they didn't even tell us about that. No. <laughs> yeah. But it was like, it was, Scorn is so good. I just wonder about its interactions with, with Apocalypse. I just feel like you're kind of like, you're, you're hamstringing Apocalypse decks a little bit because it's like the Apoc's not getting that high, but then Scorn's getting massive. I don't know. It's weird, but overall, I, I do like the card a lot. I'm a huge discard believer, so I like it. It's a good one. Yeah, I think, again, I hope anyone that did play the archetype got the card very solid. Like, both these, we knew her and uh, Toxin were going to be so healthy for their archetype. So good all together. The stats, I'm curious on Toxin. He's a lot harder to play, and so I am, uh, you know, balances per se. But I will start the conversation by saying Toxin made balance way, way easier to play in my opinion at least for those that don't play it a lot like myself what do we give toxin we both came in together once again holding hands locked arms 4.5 and how is he doing he's running a 53 percent win rate at eight percent of the meta that's pretty damn good and the decks that he's in we have a couple balanced decks uh running hit monkey beast type stuff 58 percent win rate range in uh top 50 percent infinite that's good. And then like another version of deck of that deck is like at a 57.9% win rate. Like these are great decks. And I think what you're saying as well is absolutely correct because of the fact that it gave you another bounce option. It was a much more natural feeling game flow uh, for bounce players and anyone who's just trying to play card like bounce was a little rigid. You had to play Falcon a specific way. You only had one shot with Beast. You had to maximize the Beast bounce. Toxin gives you like that sec. It's like double dipping a chip. You know what I mean? And I yeah. feel like that's what Toxin is. It's the it's the second dip. And so like, I, heck, I was even beasting the Toxin. Yeah. Right. Because like you can absolutely do that. Right. So like, I thought that the play lines were much better. I thought it was much more fun to play bounce. And um, I mean also a card that really benefited benefited from agent venom which is uh that's a whole other conversation actually we just had that conversation right starting at two four is pretty crazy for toxin as with yeah. all the cards it's bouncing right so it really benefited from agent venom but yeah this is a damn good card never mind the stat line i didn't care just getting another ability to bounce again is what you wanted what you wanted to see bouncing a bounce card is super advantageous did step on the toes of falcon a tad bit but yeah man i thoroughly enjoyed bounce a lot more and you're not just like hoping you get beast and if you don't you just have this falcon weird play going on and uh yeah by far the biggest winner of agent venom be coming out in the same month it just was a huge huge win for them yeah no no question and uh that's gonna take us to our next card you, you mentioned agent venom here now agent venom's an interesting one uh because i went through our notes here cozy and uh you originally you originally gave it a 3.5 but then you started drifting lower. You started I was drifting say, I lower. I thought I was way lower than that. Yeah, yeah you started drifting lower, and you were debating the the two and a half to three range. I came in at a dirty two. I was like, I'm going two, and you had a little more belief in the upside. So you're not. Okay, it's not as bad as my misery call, but you were a little higher on Ancient Venom. But I, I will say though, Anti Venom. I said Agent Venom before. Anti Venom does have a deck running a 55 percent win rate. If there's one. There's one deck, an Ajax deck, that's doing pretty good in. But outside of that, it's a 48% win rate at a 12% popularity, which I think is being influenced by the weekend mission that we're currently in. But yeah, it's not doing great. No, dude. Which I don't think this is... This card's yeah. so bad, I'd even do a highlight on him. I'm like, you know what, guys? We're just going to have fun. And we're just going to do an RNG deck because that's what uh, that's what it felt like it was. It's, it's what makes me love this game. You have a card that gives you a, a damn free play that you can even negate. And it's still, it's just not, it just, the four cost, man, it just is weird. I think that's why Frigga and, and, and Activate cards have fallen flat a bit too. It's like these cards that you can't use them, the last turn of the game just takes such a blow, man, to their overall viability. It makes them tricky to play, 100%. And like Anti Venom at a 4 7 doesn't feel awful to play. It's the same stat line as Wiccan, but like Wiccan's giving you plus two energy. And you're often playing, like, I, I, I don't know, man, like, I've had pop-offs. Like, I've gotten the Doctor Doom. I've gotten the, you know, whatever. I've gotten the Wong and they've done the combo. I've gotten Sages of Zero Zero, which is crazy, right? We've had those moments. But Agent Venom as a whole feels like you just don't, you just moved, you just moved again. I did. Um, I didn't mean to. Sorry. 
but I, I will say that Agent Venom is one of those cards that, like, you just don't need in the deck. Like, I just, like, I don't want to deal with this crap. And that's kind of what my review felt like. I was like, yeah, I'm playing Agent Venom and it works sometimes, but, like, I would rather not play Agent Venom. I would rather just not play this card, play other cards <laughs> that do what I want them to do, and not worry about the, the high end. Like, Agent Venom, you're trying to, like, it's, it's like a home run derby. You're just trying to home run stuff, but it's either you home run or you get hit with the pitch. Yeah, and then people are like, well, well, Frigga is going to... And I'm like, yeah, but also, okay, you play him down at four, and it's like, okay, you play your free card, and then you play Frigga on five? Like, <laughs> it's just... I don't know, man. I don't know. You know what it reminds me of? And this is a good fantasy football call-up for anybody that plays fantasy. When you're in a league, you know when someone offers you a trade, they're like, hey, here's two mediocre players for your good player. That's what Anti-Venom and Frigga feel like, where it's like they're two probably mid cards right and then like if you get them together and they work perfectly then you get a super awesome like effect right you're like oh bro dr doom i get to play for oh, free then copy it boom i did it right we but could then, have like edited a video where it's like only choosing battles that were the best play it's like bs man like i went hours of just in that fact me too people were people put i think you know not to uh, knock on anybody here but like i i did a full 24 hours before i put out a video on this guy on purpose i'm like there's no way because I, I thought he couldn't be as bad as he was <laughs> like i i kept playing him and getting bad cards and i'm like there's just no way it's just my lucky right like and then i just kept doing it i'm like man like even the good stuff I, ugh, he just didn't yeah he didn't age well yeah, literally my review was, I don't want to play this card anymore. I'm not having fun. I'm going to and bed. And I don't know why this <laughs> should be in your deck. You know what I mean? And like, whatever. I got the weekend mission done using an Ajax deck. It is what it is. But uh, then we got the free card, Cozy. A card you didn't have to pay for. Oh, boy. In one of the best, one of the best game modes they've released in a long time. Agony. Um, you liked Agony. You came in at three. I started at three, then dropped to two. Cozy, what are your thoughts on Agony? Oh, Agony's awful, man. Agony's such a is such a, a letdown of a card. Uh, I felt like you liked Agony. You didn't like Agony? You gave it a two? I, I, I started at three, then I dropped myself to two. Agony just uh, is, is Agony to play. It. I feel like it's the... It's not that bad. Bro, You're I, doing it a little dirty, I think. I feel like the end of this month between OTA, between Agony and Antivenom was a huge letdown. Yeah, oh, for sure it was. And, like, Agathy, I think, fell flat. I mean, it's running a 58, uh, sorry, 58, 48% win rate at 4% of the popularity. It's really only being played in, like, some cope destroy decks, right? But even then, it's getting cut. I think that they buffed this to a 1-3, and it's a totally different situation. Yeah, I can see sure. this card getting buffed, right? It's also the Season 4 card. They gave it away. I don't know. It is weak. It's definitely falling on the lower end of the uh, the expectations. Hey, and who knows? The Frigga Kitty Pride deck that I'm going to keep bringing up could use her. Yeah, because you throw the Kitty Pride into the Agony. There's no question, right? And actually, on curve, you'd be able to play the Frigga copy the Kitty Pride. Oh, damn. Look at that. Cozy, you're cooking. I hope you're it cooking. I All hope these it works. cards you said were bad, suddenly you're going to be in your top performing deck of the month. Yeah, I can't wait. Yeah, Agony's pretty rough. Now, let's go to the way we ranked them. Uh, from front to back here, there's a lot of cars to talk about. At number one, you and I both agreed to put Scream at the top, followed by Agent Venom, and then Toxin at three. Um, we both had the same, the same right through. We had Scorn at four, and then at the bottom, we changed it up a little bit. I went Misery, Anti-Venom, and Agony. You went Anti-Venom, Agony, Misery. So again, we both went to Scream, A Agent Venom, Toxin, and then Scorn is our top four. What are your thoughts on that? Worst card of the month is Agony. We, I, said, I said Agony, you said Misery. I would say Agony, and then Misery would be after that. Yeah, yeah. And then Agent Venom, and then I would probably say like, like A Scorn, Toxin, Scream, Agent Venom. So like we were close, a couple of them little, little switched. No major deviations from either side. Uh, but a couple little flipperoonies on either spot there, generally speaking. Um, yeah, I would I would say that Agony is probably the lowest performing card of the month, and uh, I think we were right to identify that. Uh, I think Scream offered a lot of excitement. I think when we did the rankings as well, we kind of said, we're just excited for this card and what it's going to yeah. do mm -hmm. to the game, right? And I think that was a core thing to understand about the way we ranked them overall. 
Talking about rankings, Cozy, we're moving on to our next topic of discussion here, which is the top 10 Series 5 cards in Marvel Snap. Now, it's kind of funny doing these things because I look at my list and like I keep tweaking it, keep changing it. It's so hard to pick a top 10, and we're going to do it right now, Cozy. We're going to start with some honorable mentions, Cozy. We'll start with you. Alrighty, for my honorable mentions by HMs, Alex, um, I've got a few. Uh, just out of the top 10, and you know what? My list isn't all about statistics. This is how I feel about it. I've got Ajax, Hope Summers, and Jeff the Baby Landshark just out of the top 10. It's crazy to put Jeff out. Uh, I still think he's really good. He's 11. He's 11. 11's really good out of 50 cards. Listen, top 10, this list is getting tighter because of how many dude how many series fives are there now it feels like there's like 70. isn't the whole game just series five i kind of laugh sometimes when they, i get the notification it's like it's new series five card i'm like duh obviously bro yeah, like no, it's no, like you know, know what I mean? right? big bad um but it's funny because uh i have jeff at 11 too which is heartbreaking uh mockingbird wiccan ajax red hulk they're all right there that's like rounds out my 15. it's just crazy to think that like jeff still doesn't make it and I think that, like, with the nerf to White Widow, there's actually more wiggle room in the two drops. But, like, I don't know, man. Pro X isn't really a thing anymore, so Jeff doesn't really counter that. Like, it's the meta has shifted so far away from Jeff that, like, it's kind of crazy to think that a 2-3 that can go anywhere at any time just doesn't quite make a top 10 list. But still one of my favorite cards in the game. I, I do put them in a lot of decks. But it just goes to show you how good the actual top 10 are. What do you got at number 10? Number 10... Right at the top of the list, I've been accused of trying to pump this card all the time, nonstop, and it's it's Hope Summers. Um, I, I love Hope Summers. I think this is literally so unbelievably disrespected. I know the comment section is going to go off on the fact that we talk about how disrespected Hope Summers is on a constant basis. But no one's playing Hope Summers, and maybe for a reason. But, like, this card is so good. And I think what's happening here is you're getting, like, the Wiccan effects, uh, the buff to Electro, you're seeing these like uh, Corvus Glaive, like you're getting these additional ramp options and Hope Summers doesn't feel as necessary as it once was. But don't forget that Hope Summers was absolutely cracked in the heyday of Kitty Pride Thena and that package got a little bit of a nerf. I still think Hope Summers is fantastic and this card is going to find its way back in the meta. There's no question about it. Yeah, it's funny. I can't believe that card and my card came out at the same time. Red Hulk is my 10. Uh, Red Hulk came out the same week as Hope Summer's Crazy Week in Marvel Snap, I believe. So Red Hulk could go down if Gore takes his spot, but Red Hulk is still big boy, does big things. I was like kind of surprised I ranked him into like the honorable mentions range. But yeah, I can absolutely see Red Hulk being the 10th the best there. And it's because it's still just an absolute massive body. At number nine for me, um, this was a difficult light. It's, it gets harder and harder as you kind of move up, but I'm going with Cassandra Nova. Um, it's kind of hurts to not put her a little higher. And I think I, I might've switched her one spot a little higher, but I'm going to stay with number nine. She's good. But I think that, uh, with the, uh, the dark cock changes specifically rock slide getting changed to a four cost. I think that those packages suffered a little bit and where Cassandra Nova still works is with like ancient venom decks and things like that. Still an excellent card. Airstrom, not quite as popular as it once was, but still an effective meta piece. So Cassandra Nova's good, just not quite the tech and meta counter it once was. Number nine, I've got a Gilgamesh. I think that the dude, I don't care what his stats say, he's just as good as he's always been. I think he's a very, very strong card. I think Zoo is an incredible deck to play, very consistent. My number nine. Yeah, Gilgamesh is absolutely insane, and uh, insane enough that I think I'll be mentioning him ever so much later. Number eight for me, Cozy. Um, this is where Thena comes in. And uh, I actually, this is post-nerf Thena. Like, OG Thena was so unbelievably cracked. And it's hard to believe that just, like, a little bit of a change of power really made that much of a difference. I think Thena's incredible. Um, I think that it completely carries that archetype as a whole. Um, it's just a little unfortunate that archetype seems like it's not functioning as well as it was prior. But it's, it's just on the outskirts of the meta. And I think it's going to come back, most certainly. Um, so, Thena at number 8 for me, I think this card is absolutely unbelievable. Uh, I've got Silver Sable, even though I could put her way higher because she performs uh, that way. Um, she is narrow in application. So uh, just like looking at them in a top 10 perspective, I have her uh, low because of that reason. Very good card. Plays very well. Always like my favorite card in the decks that she's played in. Uh, but yeah, I've got her coming up next. Like obviously the bounce decks is where she's kind of performing the best right now. Um, but like she didn't quite make like the zoo decks like I would have expected her to, to make. 
But uh, I guess what the narrow application you mentioned is actually true. Uh, she's definitely being seen a lot in those like toxin style decks. Um, and for number seven, this is where I had Gilgamesh, so it's very fortunate that he's still on okay. the screen here. I did bring him in at number seven. It's kind of crazy to think that like OG Gilgamesh was just not quite enough, and then like that two power kind of threw him over because. He got buffed, right? Originally, he felt kind of mid. Like, he didn't feel like he was quite pushing that archetype to the next level, which is kind of surprising because at that time, we would have had the OG original Mockingbird as well. So there was a lot of reason to think that Gilgamesh would have been enough in its current state. But then now where he's at, he is such a clear winner in terms of its power play. And the fact that he's a five cost is a superpower because you're often able to combo him with another one cost or even a Mockingbird that might be one cost that if you've played something else out. I think he's just remarkable. Um, and I think we have him roughly the same spot, which makes sense. Athena, I've got in that spot uh, for the same reasons you said. Uh, not too much. Again, I'm going to talk about the ones lower. I, 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 I'll talk about the ones lower less. I, I don't need to go on a huge spiel on them. I think Athena's fine, right? I think Athena, uh, the Kitty Pride deck that I've mentioned a billion times, maybe, yeah. could come back. All I know is I lose to Thena a lot. I lose to Thena all the time because I underestimate how high she's gonna go. And now she's got that, she's got that Dracula effect to her. Where I'm like, I see the lane, I'm like, I'm gonna avoid that altogether. Oh, dude, for sure. Like she's always reaching to the, uh, the stars. And what I will say is, because you just gotta embrace losing all the time, like I have. And then oh yeah, just, I've embraced it. I'm full. Yeah, I've captained it. That's what you our, got for number six, Cody? That's our guild, right? We, we lose. Uh, number six, I've got uh, Sage here. I think Sage um, Sage is just a winner. Sage is a uh, much more flexible card than most. Does so well in the decks that she performs in. Feels like I'm always getting great value. Feels like I'm winning a lot with her. Um, it's a card I can recommend to a lot of people. I like Sage. Yeah, I love Sage a lot. And I, I've been putting Sage in a lot of different decks. And again, with Agent Venom, like it's another card that's really kind of found itself. Um, and it's been just a remarkable power output from a three costed card. Um, at number six, this is where I put Erisham. Um, Erisham, while still being a little cringe in people's eyes, is performing exceptionally well. Still a definite meta contender. Still a very good deck. Somehow, every time I'm against an Erisham player, it's to turn one Loki. And I'm just like, bro, come on. Like, seriously. Oh, then, oh, look, they Quinjet. Like, that's, it's unbelievable how good they're able to draw, despite the RNG that's supposed to be in the deck. I probably think that Erisham remains where it is, but, like, bro, I think Erisham's still really good. When an Erisham gets a Quinjet, and I'm like, oh, cool, and then I look at it, and it's, like, generated from Erisham, I'm like, what? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why, God? Uh, but, yes, uh, I'll talk about him later. I've got, uh, Elioth next up. I think Elioth is always a card that's statistically good good and whatnot but i don't know i think he's good he's definitely top five we're gonna have him at the five spot um i don't play him a ton right and that's just a personal choice i think i just don't play him a ton uh because it's not the decks that i always make around it uh, i was doing him a lot when he was less uh popular he's definitely rising in popularity these days uh he's a very good card though I feel like you and I have a similar mindset of like, we want to play the things that like are kind of like emerging in the meta. We want to be kind of like, uh, we don't want to be playing like the cringe, you know what I mean? Like the two cloud. And it, it kind of sucks because like, I felt like Elioth really put a damper on the enjoyment of high voltage. I feel like you could have just let, you should just let the, the high rollers roll. You know what I mean? And Elioth was like poo pooing on that mode a little bit. Although it's again, a necessary evil to some degrees and ranked of course, because you can't just have these turn six crazy pop-offs. It's hard to believe that it used to delete everyone's cards at one point. <laughs> now it has a very different effect. Um, at number five for me, this is where I had Sage for all the reasons why you brought before. Um, incredibly powerful card. I love it. Who are you at number five? Uh, I just, I think I, five was my, uh, it was my Eliath, correct? Um, oh, see, I'm yeah. just losing track of everything. No, so it's we're right. at number four now. Yeah. It's cause I've had Sage on screen forever. Four, uh, that's on me. Four is, uh, War Machine. I, I listen, I don't care again what the stats say. I think War Machine is just a very good card. Probably one of my most recommended cards to get in the game. What he brings, the decks you can build with him. He gotten, uh, you know, things around him. The whole storm thing got messed with a little bit. I don't really care. I, I still just love what he does uh, for Marvel Snap and, and, and is just a great card. An ongoing War Machine going to be a great deck to play into, uh, I guess, Gore when that comes out because you just like have no yeah. honor yeah, yeah, yeah. on the field of play, right? And you kind of just deny your opponent that. Um, also, a little goose gameplay there and just prevent them from playing Gore. Uh, can you tell what I'm going to be playing that week? I'll probably just end up playing Gore, to be honest with you. But yeah, like I like War Machine a lot, and um, I think it's kind of unfortunate that that Storm took a stray bullet, which I absolutely think it did. Um, 
War Machine was a 4.7. It was really, really good at 4.7. We brought it down to 4.6. The effects just good. And I think that, like, while you can look at, like, the, the combination with Legion and stuff like that, I think it's just actually a good ongoing card. And I still expect it to be a very legitimate component of the meta moving forward. For me at number four, I'm going to go Silver Sable. Uh, I think this card is just an incredible one drop, yeah, universal appeal, incredible reach potential, disruption. It does so many, it checks off so many boxes to the point where it's like, I don't know how they release more one drops without having like, I don't know how you make a card stronger than Silver Sable without it completely destroying the game. Yeah, no, Sable's definitely legit, man. Who do you got at three? We're going to the top three now. Uh, this is where I have Eliath at three. Um, I do run Eliath at three here. And um, I just think he's super good. And I think he's a cube stealer. His cube rate's very, very high. Uh, very high equi uh, cube equity card. Yeah, it's cringe, but you know what? Like, if you're if you're playing competitive Marvel Snap and you want to win games, I think that this is one of the cards you turn to for sure. Agent Venom is my three. Uh, I love Agent Venom. Uh, obviously, we just talked about him so much at the beginning, why he's good, if he's good. Age of Venom plays in a lot of different decks. He's not as narrow as you might think. Age of Venom is my my three recommendation. Yeah, and who's at your number two? My two is Ayrsham. I don't play Ayrsham. In fact, if you look at my... I don't know when's the last time I played Ayrsham. I just know he's he's cracked. I, like, pure, honest statistics. The most cards he can play about these days is Ayrsham. In competitive play, people hate Ayrsham. What he does is still insane. To get a card to have fun and do good, go Ayrsham. Yeah, he's 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 a good card. Yeah, I, I had him at number six. I can definitely see the argument for number two because of just how like his win rates are still great. Yeah. Um, despite the nerfs, like he's still a legit meta contender. And if there was a tournament today, there's a good chance that an Airstream deck could win it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, for um, sure. So it's pretty crazy how good he is. At number two for me, I went with Nico. Uh, yeah. Nico is just so so incredible. I love the card. I love playing the card. It goes in so many different lists. Uh, I play primarily in my Phoenix Force lists. It's just the versatility is insane. Um, the surprise factor of wiping out a limbo with the location change or sliding into a, a location with the move right, which tends to be the least preferred but still good. The copying a card, it's like literally pre-power crap frigga, I guess. You know what I mean? It's just, it's really, really good. I love it. I just don't get sick of playing Nico. Yeah, Nico's my number one. Uh, I think Nico is, uh, in fact, I think we're celebrating a full year of Nico being what, uh, I've stood on the hill of Nico being my favorite card in Snap for quite a while, uh, quite a long time. I think Nico is in almost all my builds. Like, I <laughs> just always seem to want to play her, what she offers, what she does so flexible she's a one car it's just if they ever change her to two i quit marvel snap i love her she's a great one arrow in shambles by the way uh, yeah i'm just gonna throw uh, that out there know. very unfortunate number one for me I'm, i threw age of venom there a little bit of a cop out it's definitely a meta call it's like bro age of venom is absolutely crazy right now could have very easily been nico though like i actually love nico more than i love agent venom but just in the current meta right now ain't nobody complaining about nico age of venom though it's pretty much everywhere like it is all over the place and if you're talking about the most impactful series fives right now it's going to end with agent venom and cozy that takes us to our snapchat mailbag where our good people listening they did ask us a couple questions there was a ton of comments a ton of comments a ton of questions mostly despair as mad salty skills said this has to be the worst candy slash chocolate list i've ever seen in my life I brought it up at the beginning of the episode. Uh, it, I, we got a lot of hate. We got a lot of hate, but that is how we know we did our job, right, Alex? Listen, I, I don't care what anyone says. Uh, I, I'm a grown man, and if I want to use a spoon to eat a peanut butter cup, I oh, can do dude, that. that was weird. I think I look back. I actually rewatched that, man. That's some that. Hey, listen, what are we doing? Listen, you put it in the fridge. Okay, you put it in the fridge, and then like it gets the outside becomes a very hard shell. <laughs> And then the middle is much softer. And then what's cool is you eat the middle with the spoon. And then the outside is like this crunchy, like candy you get to eat as well. Like, it's just, you just enjoy it better. You know what I mean? When Alex dies on his gravestone, I, I mark my words. It's going to say, I don't care what anyone says. That's your trademark. You live by it. And at <laughs> least you live by it. Uh, but yeah, the people, the people's comments about that, it was impeccable. And uh, probably one of my favorite segments we've done in a long time. It was just fun to just ramble on about candy. Yeah, it's kind of funny because, like, it's I say that all the time. I don't care what anybody says, but those that know me, including you, Cozy, you know you that like, I actually really do, do care about what people <laughs> say. Yeah. 
<laughs> I actually do. do take it to heart. Yeah. Oh yeah. But uh, yeah, honestly, the tier list was fun and uh, bad salty skills. I apologize for it being the worst. My favorite comment, though, one of them was also like, "Hey guys, love the Snapchat, but this is the worst list I've ever seen in my life." Like those ones. There it is. He's got a resource. So Are you, you kidding me? You do like uh, you you you. It seems so hard to do that, dude. No, it's so easy. It's so easy to do it. Look at this. Look what I got beside me too. Boom, sour patch baby. This is my son's bucket. I took it. <laughs> Are you eating? You're just like, oh wow. We're gonna do some cozy eating Reese's pieces. Here, I can't have a full uh, Reese's ASMR. in front of me, not eat it. In fact, I kind of felt bad about not putting it in S. I put it in A, and I really felt bad. Really? I didn't feel bad about anything. I, the only thing I felt bad was about was like, I didn't know a lot of the candy, like this American ass candy that you guys are talking about. I'm like, no, dude. oh, my wife said one of the, she listened to it. She said there's like some gum that tastes like soap that's in the States. What? Never heard of that. There's gum that tastes like soap. It's a purple gum that tastes like soap. Hubba Bubba gum? That's just Hubba Bubba. Come on, man. Anyway, someone in the chat's going to know. Um, there is definitely a type of gum that's intended to taste like soap. I'm just throwing it out there. Dude, I don't, I'm going to blow me up here. Sorry. Um, I don't, I don't know. I don't think I've heard of that. There are these like Harry Potter jelly beans that taste like butt. Well, I think that's the Bernie Bots every flavored beans. So you eat one and it's supposed to taste like farts and stuff. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going to eat those. Tricky Otter comes in with a question for cozy specifically we don't get a lot of these actually next week i want all questions at cozy i want you guys just to target oh, cozy with a okay. bunch of random ass questions cozy would you rather one have to start a marvel snap over again from collection level one okay and go through the new player experience or two continue playing snap at your current progress but you can only ever call cards by the nicknames that Alex gives them, like Skillmonger, Wongers, and Hydration Robert. I would delete my whole account. I would <laughs> take them all. I'll take them all. I couldn't do it. Hey, take them all. Kill Arrow. Uh, you do what you want. You have... That is like... That'd be like we... <laughs> if I had like a telephone call me and, and they could they could ask almost for anything and I, I can't... Skillmonger it will never leave my mouth it, intentionally. intentionally. Dude, I can't wait for you to be doing your Surtur video. Surtur video. I still don't know how to say his name. Um, I, know, right? I can't wait for you to do him. And then when you play Crossbones, you have to call him Crossboners. You just have to. It'll... I'll delete the channel. You just won't do it? If Actually, you, I don't want people commenting that down below. I'll get, like, demonetized or something. You get a you get a, you get get a a ring pop for the next episode and, and eat the whole thing while we're talking, and I will do that. Dude, there's people that have been requesting the ring pop <laughs> ASMR. I'm not sure if I'm into that. I don't know if I can do it, but maybe that's a maybe that's like a Patreon. One style. guy in the comments is like, "How dare you about lollipops? I enjoy myself a good pop all the time." And I was like, "Yeah, man." And it's weird. It is a weird thing to have. That's kind of hilarious. Uh, Deep Duper, sorry, Super Duper Tyler asked. I feel personally attacked by this candy tier list. I'm a grown man who loves Laffy Taffy. Who eats both lollipops and popsicles oh, alone? The best kind of lollipops are the ones in the clear plastic wrapping as well. Fight me, Alex. I love how I just like <laughs> said this guy. <laughs> you just went into know. the two. I don't even know. Uh, hey, man, it's okay to be weird. You know, like. Yeah, like, listen, I get it, Tyler. Like, you like. You like the popsicles alone? Like, listen, if you want to sit by yourself, do and what you want to do alone. You can blow bubbles fine. alone. You do, do whatever you, do you want to do. You do, do, do you, know. Tyler? It's a weird thing. <laughs> yeah, like I just for me, it's not. It's not for me, man. Yeah, it's just like it's got to be totally duper about me. that. Yeah. I love macaroons. Is gonna close it out for us today. Uh, and this is specifically for me. This is so funny, Cozy, because you've been busting my chops about this for two years. Your new YouTube profile picture makes your channel look like you're a high school teacher, and I love it. I love your new one. Your old one had to go. It ha It's the most, like, it'd be like, hey, let's look at, let's pull out this Mr. Rogers VHS, and he's just like, 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 just <laughs> dead. Bro, it's like not even, like, it's the most, bro, it looks like you're on an MMA fight card. Like, it was so not you like my dad looked you up as like my podcast party he's like dude why does this guy hate everyone i'm like you know i don't know because that's not him like i i'm so glad you changed it yeah i love the new profile picture it looks great 
Yeah, yeah, we actually got those. We got those taken together at TwitchCon, believe it or not. That's right. So the background's purple. Here's a, that's a little fun note. I just like the fact that they said you look like a high school teacher. I'm like, okay, that's. <laughs> I don't think they realized that I am a high school nailed teacher. Nailed it. Yeah, just, right. Yeah, nailed it. Got the exact look that I was aiming for there, guys. Thank you so much. Really appreciate you. Let's leave some comments down below for Cozy specifically. Let's do the roast of Cozy Snap next week. There, I want to get some uh, some comments that we can throw Cozy's way. Love you guys. Thank you for supporting us, and we'll see you on that next one.